Welcome back to redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd. I'm your host Mikey. Today's tutorial we are going to work on a yarn ball wreath. There's absolutely no crocheting involved in this. This is completely crafting based. I wish I would have made one of these years ago. This was a fabulous afternoon to be able to work on it. Great family project getting those kids involved. The trick is, is figuring out what size of wreath you need, finding the materials and then wrapping up enough styrofoam balls in order to create the illusion that each one of the balls are actually made of yarn. So today's tutorial, I'm going to take you through step by step on key elements to making a yarn ball wreath. So for today's project, you're going to need a few things. You're going to need a random assortment of different size styrofoam balls. I'm going to have tips on what kind of balls to use. There is a difference and you can use whatever you want, but I'll have some tips for you. You're going to need a wire frame. This, these balls are all mounted to a wire frame. You could use a clothes hanger, but I'd recommend an actual wire frame from a crafting store and I'll have tips about that in a bit too. I only use four yarn balls for that, this whole project. I used two of the balls that were color transitional yarn and they were the Midnight and Treasure series. I also use Swanky and then With Love and when you use transitional yarns you end up with different tinges because we're depending where you're wrapping it and where it's coming out of the ball is a different color. So therefore it looks like I've used a lot more yarn than I have but it is actually the tr uh, transitional yarn of Midnight and Treasure. Also going to need a glue gun and for safety reasons make sure that if you have kids around that you don't burn them with it or they don't burn themselves or they don't glue themselves to the wreath. We also have uh, need wire. We actually wire the balls right to the wreath itself and I'll have tips on that in just a moment. Uh, you're going to need wire cutters in order to cut the wire. Don't use your good scissors. You're going to need some ribbon or some kind of accessories to add to your wreath as well. So that's completely up to you and your choice. You're going to need um, some scissors obviously to cut your yarn and also the ribbons and etc. And you're also going to need a hair dryer. You know when you use glue and you always get those fibers that just kind of come off and it's just all over the place. If you blast those with uh, hot air they actually melts it right into the project so that you actually don't see those. So it's a really good helpful tip. So when we come back I'm going to show you some tips on what we did and give you some more advice on being able to make this Christmas wreath today. So the first up you're going to need a wire frame that the balls are attached to. You can get many different sizes at the craft store. You just have to keep in mind that the size is relevant towards your door or towards the mantle or wall that you're putting it on. You should be aware too that the balls will come up over top of the frame on the interior and exterior. So if the frame is too small you might not end up with a hole right in the middle. So the next thing you're going to realize is that you need styrofoam balls. Now these are not yarn balls. These are styrofoam balls wrapped with yarn and they're wrapped just enough that you do not see the white in the, in the actual styrofoam. Now you'll notice that the styrofoam balls can be really pricey in the craft store as well as the dollar store. And there's different kinds of styrofoam. If you look up close you may notice that one ball is more of a rounded surface and the other ball more is granular. The granular balls work much better because the yarn does not slide off them as easy. So if you have a slippery type of yarn the granular really holds on to them really much better. But there's another tip that I have for you. If this cost is too much because I picked them up at the dollar store and the craft store it was like $8.99 a pack at the craft store. It was pretty pretty high up there. But what you can do is that Christmas decorations are relatively cheap. So for example you can get granular kind of Christmas balls at the dollar store. I think it's eight in a pack for maybe two bucks and you can use these to wrap up the yarn. The, the actual knobs that actually hang from the tree can actually be turned upside down into the reef and this would be your cheaper option to do. So where does the glue gun come into play? We're going to start wrapping these balls and then what we're going to do is just continually wrap and at the very end when you think that you've wrapped enough all you just do is you take the glue gun and you just boom and you just tack that into place so that you never have a ball that's completely finished at any point that has any ties or knots that are visible. So the glue gun works wonders. You can do the tying of knots if you wish. If that's a personal option to you, you just gotta make sure that tie then is on the underside so that you never see it from the outside of the wreath. So once the balls are all wrapped up what I just did at the end is that I just worried about the wire at the end. So I did a whole slew of balls. I actually did more than I was supposed to but you know it's better to have more than less. And you basically cut a piece of wire and just slide it under where it's glued. It is because you know it's secured at that point. Just slide it under, twist tie it around the ball and now this now 
has the wires that can actually wire directly to the frame. So without further ado, let me show you how to wrap one of these balls and how to get it all prepared so that you know how to work on this particular project. So here is an up close version of the two balls. This one here is from the dollar store. You can see it's a pretty rounded surface. This one here has more of a granular surface and it actually captures the fibers a lot better. And then of course if you're gonna use your Christmas ball that also has the granular kind of effects as well. You could also use Christmas balls and just glue the whole surface. Just put on some Elmer glue or that kind of glue and just dip it in some sand and therefore you'll have granulars as well if you are wanting to do that. So what we want to do is just put the yarn on top of the ball. I'm not doing any ties at this point. Just leaving it on top and I just wanna get that first one wrapped around so then basically it's trapping it in position. I just wanna continually wrap and circle my ball at the same time and we never want to get any kind of pooling of too much yarn in one section because you can have a tendency to do that. So you just wanna continually wrap around and at this point it's about surface cover. It's not about um, trying to get it neat and nice at this point. You would just wanna continue to wrap. So it took me about two and a half hours to wrap up all of the balls. So it's a good afternoon. Put on the cup of kettle, or put on the cup of tea. <laughs> Have it handy for you to keep energy. This is a great little project for kids as well if you wanna get them involved in the process. But if you're more of those, that kind of person that loves consistency, you might wanna just do it themselves and send the kids to school. It's up to you. It's your creativity, it's your project. So now I'm getting close to actually just finishing it off. There's some white areas. So now I'm about refining those layers. Now this with love is a bit chunky so therefore it's easy to cover the, the areas that are showing casing in white. Now at any point when you have this on the wreath if there is any white showing it's yarn so you can actually shift it around a little bit. You know tap a little bit of glue to where you think you need it but the glue is very visible from the outside so you never wanna have that glue surface um, because it's shiny on the outside unless the ball is gonna be covered in something else. Like so. So I'm almost done at this point. I wanna rotate my sphere and just kinda just refine some final areas. Sometimes where you got your fingers and your thumbs you kind of are skipping over those areas at this point. So therefore you kinda want it to be random in many ways that it does look like a true yarn ball. And once you have it done you just have to snip off your yarn like so and then take the glue gun just like so and just tap it right there and actually secure that loose end and then you're just gonna wanna let that dry. So you just wanna kinda don't use your fingers to smear it in but you might wanna have something like a popsicle stick to kinda smear it in and then therefore just let it air dry just like so. So now what I wanna do is I wanna grab some floral wire and I wanna cut maybe about six inches just like so and then just use the wire cutters and just cut like so. So basically where I have tied it or glued it, it's up to you, is that you wanna slide the wire underneath of the fibers that are there. So you don't actually have to go into the actual uh, foam itself. This is really thin wired. It would never go through anyway. So you just go underneath a whole whack of strands just like so. Pull it up like so and then just twist around. And you're gonna wanna make sure that the glue is dry before you do that because you don't wanna get your fingers stuck in hot glue. So I did all of the balls first and then I did the wire and now it's good to go to the surface. Now when I started off the wreath just like so, in actual fact all of the balls were really loose and just kind of just hanging off the wires. Once you get enough balls you can actually turn the wreath upside down like so and essentially you can see all the wires that are on the back. So for example say I was gonna wire this in, I just essentially wanna put the ball down underneath and just stick the wires up through the frame and I wanna be conscientious that I can play with the balls a little bit to make sure that they can actually slide around if I have to. And so I just wanna twist tie these securely around the frame and I wanna tuck in the wires or just trim them. It's up to you so that nobody gets hurt. So you'll notice at this point that this ball here can actually slide. So what we just did in order to do that, you'll see that these don't slide. They're actually all working together. We took the hot glue gun and we glue gunned 
the actual balls together once that they were on the frame. So everyone's wired. So basically I have left in little gaps here and there so I can add some ribbons, I can add some decorations, maybe some bells. You can actually add Christmas baubles in there if you think that they're gonna work as well. You have a lot of creativity uh, that's available to you. You know this is really is about yarn for me so I want to really kind of keep this as true to my fiber arts that I love and basically with the holes in there that I can insert other fun little stuff I may even put a crochet hook somewhere. It's going to be kind of fun and I've always wanted to read like this and in actual fact this has been a fabulous afternoon to spend because I'm going to have something that I can use for years and years. And so that's it for today. This is how to make a yarn ball wreath. Hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial. Be creative, figure out some colors that work for you and decorate it any way that you wish. Until next time, I'm Mikey on behalf of redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd. We'll see you.